So, hey, my name is Lisa. I'm a senior tech writer at Thin, and I'm very happy to speak at the conference for the very first time. And my talk is actually about another first experience as a tech writer in a startup who used to work in enterprises. I've started my tech writing career in really big enterprises, first end user documentation for not really techy products, followed by public APIs and lastly, cloud-based services. I mistakenly felt quite experienced at that point. Like I've seen a big variety of products and technologies, I know best practices and I'm ready to face my next challenge. So when a German startup reached out to me on LinkedIn, my decision was quick and easy. Internal documentation, just APIs, no huge tech or documentation depth yet. I can build it as I like it. Wow, let's go. I can do that easily. I'll have all the tools and knowledge I need. And yeah, now a few words about the company. Finn was founded in 2019 and it's a software powered business building a car subscription platform for new cars. A couple of numbers to give a big picture of the business. Finn grew its subscription era from uh, 46 million in 2021 to 100 million in October, in October 2022. And the current number is something about uh, 140 million. So it's almost tripled during the last two years. I do really like the fact that this tremendous growth coincides with the introduction of tech writing in the company. So because, well, now you know who's actually doing the job. And yeah, so yeah, I've joined in 2021 uh, to be the first tech writer, and now we're an amazing team of three. But that also means that uh, there were two years without uh, tech uh, writing from the time the company was founded. But it worked during this time because of core principles, automation and keeping it scalable and uh, simple. Now, everyone at Thin is enabled to use no-code and low-code solutions. In the beginning, these solutions were actually what enabled the fast growth and uh, on, on the base of prototyping and trying different things, fast pivoting. And yet, yeah, once this stage was over, the company hired software engineers and another key principle appeared, API first. Engineers have ownership and responsibility. You build it, you run it. The organizational design at Finn is mission-based and cross-functional. That means that engineers or tech writers are set up per department. And it's not only one engineering or technical writing team for a world company. Independent teams at Finn manage their own way of working. They're very autonomous. They need to interact and have clear interfaces for that. And which is in case of engineers are obviously APIs. These APIs need to be well documented as if they were external, so no difference. This kind of structure kind of asks uh, for the perception provided in the title, tech writing as a startup, because every team is practically a company on its own. In your tech writing team, uh, the team with supporting enabling function is a startup trying to solve the big pain of uh, customers, so their customers, like documentation. I understood that uh, only later along the way, but at first it seemed like the perfect sandbox to try out everything I've learned, uh, I've learned at enterprises. Obviously, lots of great learnings can be applied. It was not a disaster, uh, but some things could be done in a more structured or efficient way. Um, if I only had a big picture in my mind from the very beginning. So my first learning was with great power comes great responsibility. I was underestimating the amount of uh, job that needed to be done apart from just writing documentation and marking tickets done, as it was for me a big team and big company. In a startup, everybody wears many hats. And that, yeah, despite the initial challenges of uh, exploring this new environment, just imagine the growth uh, in a year and a half. My first OKR okay was uh, to um, find appropriate tooling and document six APIs, um, probably like 10 endpoints each. 
so really not a lot. Crucial in most use, but just six. Last quarter's OKRs were maintaining documentation for 49 APIs plus variety of other projects. Year and a half in between, six versus 49 and other projects. Um, so yeah, what I really want to do today is to invite you to look at the tech writing function in the company as a startup. There were two things that helped me to develop this understanding. Organizational design from one side, cross-functional mission-based teams, and the concept of me Inc. from the other side. It's pretty old and very, very good. It says that we should think of ourselves as a company while building our personal brand, being hired and providing our services to our customers or colleagues. So I understood that to succeed, I need to adopt this attitude and apply it to the tech writing team. We should be known, we should gain trust and win our customers. I looked at several articles and advice for startup founders and found lots of similarities. Same development stages, same problems, rapid changes, fast decisions. So from that point, the situation I was in started to be not that unique at all. Uh, what that gives, it creates structure. Everything is not chaotic anymore. The startup environment is still unpredictable, yes, but it has some rules and stages. Um, ways to graduate to the next stage. So knowing where you're along the continuum helps to anticipate what's coming next and prepare accordingly. Sometimes it's hard to find the exact same experience, but learning to extrapolate or interpolate is a very helpful thing. The good idea is to look outside of your situation to a different industry, different activity, different level of generalization and the picture seems to appear eventually. Very helpful picture. You have now somebody or something to learn from. And yeah, what are these startup stages and what does each of them mean? There are actually several ways uh, to look at the number of stages a startup goes through during the de its development. And today we are going to use this one. Idea, seed stage, growth stage, and scale up where we find ourselves now. So yeah, every startup begins with an idea. Why is it crucial to make documentation a priority from day one? What reasoning can be behind hiring a tech writer at this early stage? Why can all that be successful? So. People at startups usually talk about documentation, but not so many actually have it. And in the case of Finn, it was not a question if there should be a proper documentation, including API documentation. We uh, are building a heavy asset business, which means that we need to go through due diligence about every half a year. OEMs, investors, banks, literally everybody needs to look under the hood. And Plus, taking into account the organizational design, documentation is also the way for senior management to have an overview of what's happening in all other verticals. So we need documentation, period. Who can and should write it then? It's normal to wear many hats in startup, yes. It's especially important to use resources wisely. So the first assumption here is that developers can do nearly everything themselves. They can write code, they can write tests, they can write documentation. But, you know, <laughs> do they actually do all of that? Do they like doing it? Is their quality of the output predictably good? So let's have a look at the state of uh, the API report produced by Postman. Around 31% of respondents say that more than half of their organization's development effort is spent on APIs. When asked about obstacles to consuming APIs, respondents say, say that number one problem was lack of documentation chosen by 55%. And at the same time, only 6% of developers' time devoted to writing the API documentation. So that means it's around one hour per developer in a week. 
not that much, unfortunately. So it was decided that if developers inevitably need to combine several activities, let it be writing code and covering it with tests, as they do it naturally better, while documentation should be created by technical writers. That's why we have no quality assurance engineers, but we have tech writers. That was a very deliberate decision. So yeah, the next step is actually hiring the first tech writer. I was lucky enough to be that person. As I've said already, uh, I have had only experience in enterprises, quite usual for a startup founder. What can help here? Startup accelerator program, or in my case, a mentor outside of the organization with experience in shaping how tech writing is done in the company from scratch. At that point, I haven't had one, but it's a really, really good idea for you if you're in the same situation. So yeah, the most important task during the seed stage was building an MVP of our internal developer portal. The docs code workflow was a must. Open source tools to implement it were not considered as we wanted to reduce developers workload and uh, not add portal improvement and maintenance related problems. So after some consideration and comparison of the available options we've chosen for Dockly, so that means that our specifications are stored in the repos of the respective APIs and published automatically as a static site. A small amount of markdown pages uh, stored in the Redockly repo. I've documented six crucial APIs. We went leave, great. And at this point, I face somehow expected problem, but still super unusual for me personally. Feedback. In an enterprise with public documentation, you always have plenty of feedback. It can be super messy. It can be rude if a customer is very dissatisfied, yes. But you have this precious information to fix, to iterate, to improve your texts, your documentation. In a startup, you know your audience you literally have the list of names. Despite the fact the amount of feedback and contributions I managed to get right after the launch of the portal was too small. So I've started my investigation through countless one-on-ones and coffee chats. And the common problem appeared to be that lots of developers have no previous experience of interaction with a tech writer as they only worked at startups and it's not so common to have a tech writer in a startup or it's their first employment so documentation of tech writing all that was something from a different world the most helpful action to fight this was to hold a knowledge session about tech writing so what is tech writing? How can you easily improve your own writing? And actually the long-term outcome of this session brings us to the next stage, growth stage. So the knowledge session I'm speaking about on tech writing was available for all of my colleagues, not only developers. And if you're a tech writer, you definitely know the situation. You meet a colleague uh, not from tech for the first time, let's say somewhere in the kitchen, not in the office, and this conversation happens. Hey, what do you do? I'm a tech writer. Okay, so uh, okay, like, so what do you do exactly? First thing, that's talked. And second thing, business automation managers who deal with low code and no code automation found API documentation useful for their purposes. So the audience expanded, not only developers anymore. Meanwhile, the data team was growing rapidly and I was asked to propose something on data documentation. Lots of people in company were writing tech blogs, so it was decided to create a content hub to promote Finn as a tech company. Um, sounds like a bit too much for one person. So yeah, two more tech writers were hired and responsibilities were divided among us. Yeah, next step, scale up, the most obvious part. So what's happening here? More of the same, but on the scale. 
we have a working product, we know the audience, we have all the clear processes, and now we can shift our attitude from operating a risky startup to building a company with sustainable growth. For example, we can predict at what point we should hire more tech writers. The ratio that works for us is one tech writer per 25 developers. We continue to expand our responsibilities and create different types of documentation, tailor our existing docs for different audience types. What actually we can learn from uh, startups at this point? We can learn that scaling process can be still unpredictable. It's important to remain agile and willing to pivot quickly from obstacles to take advantage of opportunities. It's not what happened to us as a tech writing team yet. But we are ready for it because we drive tech, we drive tech writing as a startup. And yeah, to conclude, I want to formulate two learnings for two different groups for startup founders or whoever can take the decision to create a new role when you should be as cost efficient as possible. Tech writer is that crucial role in your organization for internal developer success. The earlier you hire one, the faster you can grow with your well-documented, scalable product and much happier developers. As a tech writer yourself among very independent teams, adopt a startup founder mentality. Find the way to your customers. You solve their big problem but they might be not aware of it in the very beginning and not so ready to cooperate with you at the level you expect. So gain their trust, enable their success and growth, in general, feel the ownership and learn from other startup founders because you are one of them now. And yeah, thank you.